Hello, it's Tom here with a look at how to get the best battery life out of your Nintendo Switch in portable mode. In particular, I'm looking at how external battery packs like this can massively increase your playing time while on the go. Because while it is the most powerful gaming handheld right now, the fact is Switch only lasts for up to three hours while running games like Zelda Breath of the Wild. On the go, three hours isn't enough to last a long plane flight, for example, and so we need some extra equipment. In my original Switch review, I tried to address this with the GMYLE power bank, a regular external battery used for any mobile phone. This is it right here, a cheap 10,000 milliamp hour solution that plugs into the Switch's USB-C port, but the results with Switch weren't as good as I was expecting. The low efficiency of the battery cells simply meant it only adds 4 hours 13 minutes of playtime at max brightness. For the size and weight of the GMYLE, I wasn't satisfied this is the best we could get, and so after much more testing, I found some much better options. And here they are. Let's start with the smallest and lightest of the group, the Anker PowerCore 10,000, which costs just £20 or $24. It's another 10,000 milliamp hour battery meant for phones, but since the brand is more reputable than the GMYLE, I went in hoping to get more playtime in practice. Just as importantly, this one sits very comfortably in the hand at under 200 grams, taking up half the physical space of the other two we're testing. In the portability states, this is really the one to look at. Next, we have the Lumsing Glory P2 Plus. This is a larger 15,000 milliamp hour power bank that actually costs less than the Anker at 19 pounds or $22. In terms of sheer value on paper, at least, this looks like a good option. And last but not least, we have the RAV Power, a 26,800 milliamp hour portable battery. It's one of the largest power banks available right now, only broader and longer by about half a centimeter, while the weight of these two larger batteries are similar too. The big differentiator for the RAV Power is its price. At £36 or $50, it's a considerable step up over the Anker or the Lumsing. And so to the test method. In every case, we're playing Zelda Breath of the Wild, a demanding 3D game at max settings, 50% volume, and with Wi-Fi enabled. Now, time will tell if there'll be more demanding games in Switch's future, which may drain the battery faster. But either way, this method with Zelda is simple and repeatable. We pick out the same spot on the cliffs outside the Temple of Resurrection, and to avoid the automatic screen dimming, pan the camera slowly using a wire to tilt the Switch's analog stick. This is the area that, while docked, Switch hits its peak power draw of 16 watts. It makes an excellent stress test of the machine, but again, not all games will demand this much power, and simpler 2D indie titles do last much longer. The results then? Doing this with the Anker Power Core 10,000, I get exactly five hours from Zelda at max brightness before all LEDs go out and it starts using the Switch's integrated battery. Five hours, that's not bad at all for such a tiny palm sized unit, and on the go it adds an extra 166% to the duration of a PlayStation. It's arguably more than you'll need, but it does go one better. Dropping Switch's screen brightness setting to 50% is the easiest way to minimize energy usage, and amazingly adds an extra 16% to that total battery life. So with the Anker here, running the same test at medium settings gets a longer playtime of 5 hours and 49 minutes. And that's without touching the Switch's own battery, meaning a total of almost 9 hours playtime is up for grabs. Curiously, dropping screen brightness to 0% on the Switch shows diminishing returns at play, and we couldn't squeeze much more battery life out of the Anker this way. The improvement over 50% brightness is relatively tiny, and for perspective, you'll only get an extra 3 minutes from Switch at zero brightness without a power bank attached. It's not worth it. Also worth mentioning is that volume levels aren't a big factor overall, and between 50 and 100% the gains are also slim. Moving on, let's apply that same logic to the Lumsing Glory P2 Plus. Using our same Zelda stress test at max settings again, you'd expect this 15,000 milliamp hour power bank to give exactly 50% more than the Anker at 10,000 milliamp hours. But obviously that's not quite the reality of it. My result came in at 6 hours and 20 minutes for the Lumsing, only an hour and 20 more than a much smaller power bank. It's not bad given the Lumsing is marginally cheaper than the Anker anyway, and still achieves 25% more time. In this sense, it represents the best value power bank of the three, hitting the most minutes per pound. Backing that up is the fact a medium brightness test comes in at 7 hours and 22 minutes. Add the Switch's own battery life to that, and you're looking at an excess of 10 hours overall, which is amazing. The trade-off here is in the size and the weight, where the Lumsing is considerably bulkier. 
In fact, it comes close to the RAV power bank in size, despite that power bank pushing a vastly larger capacity of 26,800 mAh. In tests with Zelda, the RAV power inevitably hits the highest playtimes overall too. From this external battery alone, you'll get 10 hours and 20 minutes on max brightness, while a medium brightness test puts it at 12 hours. Short of a trip to Australia, it's unlikely you'll ever need an external battery with this much juice. So long as you're okay carrying around an extra 456 gram brick, this gives the Nintendo Switch all the power it'll need on the move and then some. Overall then, let's divide this into categories. For the most portable, the choice is easily the Anker PowerCore 10,000. For the best value, the low price of the Lumsing here makes it a tough one to beat at just under £20. And of course, for the longest lifespan award, the RAV Power 26800 model is the one to choose, though costs as much as double the others here. And while yes, the efficiency is always lower than what's stated on each of these, the reality of practical playtime is still very good. It's much better than the GMY LE we tested before. A few closing thoughts before you go. If you're aiming to buy a power bank for your Switch, it's worth knowing you don't need a USB-C port to connect to the battery. A regular USB port with 2.1 amps output will do the job. Of course, you will need to buy a USB-C to regular USB cable separately, as none of the power banks we bought here actually include one. At best, you'll get a micro USB cable to recharge the power bank, but no way to interface with the Switch itself. The good news is, if you've bought a Switch Pro controller, you actually get one of these in the box, a USB to USB-C cable, but otherwise it's a small extra expense you'll need to make. One more question to answer here is, can these power banks recharge Switch while being drained even if very slowly? Well I'm happy to say the Anker, Lumsing and Rav Power here don't just break even on battery usage needed to run Zelda, but exceed it. So for example, if the Switch is at 50% battery, all these power banks will very slowly increase charge on the console while connected. Even in intensive areas, they supply enough power to run the game and gradually top up the battery. Provided you're running from a minimum of a 2.1 amp USB port, there's enough throughput to achieve this, though expect the charge to be very slow while playing. That about wraps it up though. If you did find this breakdown of power banks useful, please let me know with a like or subscribe below. And I'm interested to hear your experiences with recharging the Switch with external batteries. Please let me know what's worked for you in the comments. But until next time, thanks for watching.